Now, WBOC News at 5 on Fox 21. Jared Kushner says he didn't do it after talking to Congress about his contacts with Russian officials. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Hammond. And I'm Jacqueline Carley. Welcome to WBOC News and 5. Senate investigators looking into Russian meddling in the 2016 election met with President Trump's senior White House advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner today. It is the first of at least two meetings with lawmakers conducting the probes. Seth Lemon has more from Capitol Hill. Let me be very clear. I did not collude with Russia, nor do I know of anyone else in the campaign who did so. President Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner spoke outside the White House after meeting with the Senate panel to tell his story about meetings he had with Russians. The record and documents I have prov voluntarily provided will show that all of my actions were proper and occurred in the normal course of events of a very unique campaign. Kushner is the first White House employee to be grilled by investigators looking into any ties between the Kremlin and Trump campaign aides. Before the closed door hearing, he released an 11 page statement detailing four contacts with Russians during President Trump's campaign and transition into office. He claims he did not ask for a secret back channel with Russia, but wanted to establish a line of communication to discuss the crisis in Syria. Senator Ron Wyden, a Democratic member of the Intelligence Committee, wants Kushner to testify publicly in open session, saying his statement raises far more questions than it answers. On Twitter, President Trump complained about the investigation, calling his own Attorney General Jeff Sessions beleaguered and asking why he and Congress aren't also investigating Hillary Clinton. Trump also attacked the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, tweeting sleazy Adam Schiff, the totally biased congressman looking into Russia spends all of his time on television pushing the Dem loss excuse. Kushner is expected back on Capitol Hill Tuesday to answer questions from the House committee. Seth Lemon for CBS News, Capitol Hill. And President Trump's oldest son, Donald Trump Jr., and campaign chairman Paul Manafort have also agreed to testify in closed door sessions with the Senate Judiciary Committee. Well, President Trump is blaming both political parties for the failure to pass a new health care bill. He made his comments in a late afternoon address at the White House. We as a party must fulfill that solemn promise to the voters of this country to repeal and replace what they've been saying for the last seven years. But so far, Senate Republicans have not done their job in ending the Obamacare nightmare. The president called Democrats obstructionists in the process. Democrats gathered in Virginia to offer a retooled message and populist agenda. They unveiled a new slogan called A Better Deal. Thousands of people came to the Delaware State Fair every year. A member of President Trump's cabinet toured the fairgrounds today. And WBOC's Kent County Bureau Chief Tom Lehman joins us now live from the State Fair in Harrington. And Tom, you say Secretary Sonny Perdue heard from young growers and talked a little bit about farm funding at the federal level. Jackie, Secretary Purdue visited the 4-H and FFA exhibits here at the State Fair and did get to look at a lot of vegetables grown by young people like this cabbage, the heaviest in this building. Purdue also spoke with reporters earlier today before that tour got started. One of the topics discussed was billions of dollars in proposed agriculture funding cuts in the initial Trump budget. Some of that money went toward things like research, but most of the proposed cuts were rejected by lawmakers in a different spending proposal. We asked Purdue about those initial plans. He said the cuts were concerning, but also defended them. But I'm also thankful that the president is trying to look at this $20 trillion debt and understand that we've got to get our fiscal house in order. I, for one, am not comfortable kicking that trillion dollar, $20 trillion debt down to my grandchildren and their grandchildren. Purdue also talked about the need to rethink a lot of regulations on agriculture here in the U.S. Reporting live from the Delaware State Fair in Kent County, I'm Tom Lehman, WBOC News, Harrington. Well, we might have a couple more storms to uh, help us out of this heat wave. Yeah, here's the live view now from the beach in Rehoboth from our Boardwalk Plaza Hotel camera. Mike Lichniak's in our Storm Tracker Weather Center to hopefully confirm some good news about the heat. Mike? That's right, Jackie. As we go through tonight, the cold front comes through with a few more showers and storms, but behind it, 
drier air begins to push across the region and turns into a nice next couple of days. But we have to deal with the cards that will be built tonight. Live storm tracker radar showing you here on Delmarva. Things are quiet. There are a few showers and storms already beginning to develop in and around the district. And there's more showers and storms off to our west as this front continues to push towards the region. And again, it's when we get through the next few days that that dry air that's in Chicago, Cincinnati and Cleveland will begin to arrive as we go through tonight. We'll talk about the next couple of days and when we might have another chance for a few showers and storms in a few minutes. All right, Mike, thank you. The parents of critically ill baby Charlie Gard have now dropped their legal bid to send him to the United States for an experimental medical treatment. Recent medical tests on 11 month old Charlie show that he has irreversible muscular damage and the new treatment would not help. At a court hearing, Chris Gard, his father, said too much time was spent in court battles, wasting the chance to help Charlie. Both parents paid tribute to their warrior son. Charlie has a rare genetic condition, and his parents wanted him to receive that experimental treatment in the United States. The driver of a truck used in a deadly smuggling incident in Texas has been charged with transporting immigrants in the U.S. illegally. Ten people died, and more than a dozen others were found near death. Don Champion has the latest from Texas. James Bradley, the driver of a truck that became a death trap, arrived at federal court in San Antonio this morning. He's charged with transporting immigrants to the U.S. illegally. Prosecutors say he drove a trailer packed with immigrants for commercial advantage or private financial gain. The charge carries the possibility of the death penalty. Officials say as many as 100 people may have been crammed into the sweltering trailer as it rode without water to a Walmart parking lot in San Antonio. Some took off before authorities arrived, but 10 people died and about 30 others were sent to the hospital with extreme dehydration. This happens more than you can realize because people are desperate to flee other countries and come to this country. Some of the victims are believed to have entered the country illegally from Guatemala and Mexico and then got into the trailer somewhere in Texas. I just can't imagine them being stuck in there and dying when they thought they were going to come here for a better life. The truck was registered to pile transportation in Iowa. The company has not yet commented on the deadly incident. Don Champion, CBS News, Dallas. And temperatures reached over 100 degrees this weekend in San Antonio. A New Orleans police officer was shot early this morning, and it's the third time he has been shot in his career. Officer Chris Abbott was wounded during a drive-by shooting. He was working a private off-duty neighborhood watch detail when he was hit in the leg. He was released from the hospital at about midday. Abbott has been with the NOPD since 1992. He was first shot in 98 after stopping a suspect in a housing project. He was shot again in 2001, that time in the head, chest, and stomach. He's going to survive this latest incident after being shot in the leg earlier today. Wow. Well, malware attacks of Mac computers are very rare, but there is one hitting computers in the U.S. We'll tell you about it. Also, an elder scam alert. Bad guys posing as loved ones, preying on the sympathy of the elderly. WBOC News at 5. We'll be right back. Local news and weather, plus your chance to win a Gateway Subaru Impreza. Listen to 1025 WBOC-FM.